This is where the magic happens. Today, we're going to cover all of this. Computers, monitors, hard drives, storage systems, editing software, AI, workflow, and then all of your questions from YouTube and the Facebook group, all about this bonanza here. We're going to start with the specs, talking about what we're using, all that good stuff, because we have recently upgraded our computer, and we'll go through that. So, this setup here, we'll get some B-roll. It won't be sexy because I'm here by myself today. My whole editing setup is based around an M1 Studio Ultra, which is fully spec'd out, 120 gig of RAM and whatever many cores you could get. It's like, it's the top of the top of that generation, but I've only just bought it. It cost me two grand refurbished. This computer is overkill for photographers. Up until recently, we were using an M1 Mac Mini with 16 gig of RAM and a one terabyte internal SSD. That was ample for photography work. You don't need more than that. That was plenty, but because we do studio access and workshops and we're going into video production as well and there's movements and stuff like that, we needed a bit more oomph. And this was the best bang for buck. Second hand, 100% go second hand refurbished Macs. You actually get a better warranty with a refurbished Mac than a brand new one. So winner, winner, chicken dinner. It is overkill. You could absolutely buy the M4 Mac Mini at the moment. The reason we didn't go for one of those is because of ports. This has more ports and we have a lot of peripherals here. There's a lot going on here. So it's not just what's the fastest, it's also what works best. So onto that, we have this monitor here, which is a BenQ SW. This is a photo editing monitor. It is calibrated weekly with a Calibrite Color Checker Display Pro. This is calibrated. On the side here, we have a 4K video monitor. This is calibrated, but it won't calibrate as well as this. It's not the same thing. This one here is not for editing. We've got lists on here. Currently, I've got all your questions. Usually, we have like the editing notes or we'll have one page of all the files down here or the annotations, but this is where we edit. And we'll get into the ISO debate in a bit. There is a rationale behind this, but this is the main editing stuff. So. We sit here, we're good to go. I've got my Logitech MX Master keys and mouse. This is the MX Master 3. I've got pre-Sonos monitors, AKG over-ear headphones, all going through a Scarlett Focusrite. That's my audio setup. It's ample for YouTube. It's more than I need, is above and beyond. We've then also got a Rode podcast mic here for when I need to throw in some voiceover. We don't do meetings on this here. There's no webcams. This is just a workstation. This is just useful when I'm doing a video and I've messed up. I can just jump in and do a bit here. We also do remote podcasts from here. So if anyone wants a podcast filming with me, this setup here is very good for audio in this room when the doors close. It's currently not because Teddy's having a game out there, but it's very good. It's also very dark. I'm going to have some heavy noise reduction on this. This shot here doesn't do it justice. This room is dark, like really dark. We've got the blinds open and it's still very, very dark. You need a dark room for editing. Not just that, but the room of the room, the wall opposite over there. We've also put black all down it, so we get no reflection and no glare in this monitor here when I'm sat editing from here. We then have a Wacom Medium Bluetooth tablet. Um, it hides under here, then we pull it out and I put it wherever I need it to go, but it's wired in. Wireless tablets don't work. They, they lag, they're a nightmare. You want it wired in, so that's all good. That's all nicely set up. We've then got our Cow Digit over here. This gives us some extra ports, some accessibility. There's loads of stuff plugged into the back of it. Um, it just gives us that extra bit of ease of reaching stuff without having to dive over the back of things. Heading over this way, obviously here's the Mac Studio, Mac Studio, Mac Mini, Mac Studio. Very beautiful looking bit. Got a couple of ports free on the front for just plugging stuff in and on top, we have our Kingston USB-C drive dock. That means these digital medias that we use for backing up shoots, shooting to, and also shooting video from, we just take it, we dock it, and it's good to go, nice and easy. Up here, we have memory cards. This is a Lexar, it's got four different ones. We've got three uh, micro SD, we've got two SD and one CF card slot holder. That's all plugged in as well. So again, that's why the studio is so good, because we can have all these peripherals and it all just works. And then this here is a Sabrent uh, drive storage, USB-C out to the back of it. Not a NAS, we don't use NAS. This is just one drive for everything. And then under the table, there's another mirror of all these as well. We don't use network attached storage at the moment because the projects are too big, the files are too large. 
it wouldn't work. There's 150 terabytes in this. Um, so 150 below, that's 300. And then they go to Backblaze, and then they also go off-site on spinning disk as well. These are spinning disks. We'll get into how we manage this all in a bit with workflow. But this is basically the setup. We've got a printer in the corner. My internet's right there. Behind me is a load of CCTV cameras that don't record. Um, these are just so I can look at what's going on in the studio while I sat here. I can see who's at the door if I want to answer it or not. I can see if someone pulls into the loading bay. We actually have two other security systems in here, one which records to drives within this here, and one which records to a cloud, and the two of them work on different circuits and different systems, so it's all very secure. Then we have alarm systems and all that stuff as well, but this one is literally just me being able to see what's going on while sat at the desk without having to go up. The door goes, the loading bay moves, whatever. I can see it from here. Don't bother recording it because we've got other stuff. You, you might notice there's like multiple CCTV cameras next to each other. One of them will be me monitoring, the others will be recording. There's a lot of issues with recording data, so try and keep it as streamlined as possible. Let's look at software. So when we're editing here, it is quite a simple software flow. I know there's loads of stuff on the internet about different softwares. This is how it works. If we're doing video, it's DaVinci. It's always DaVinci, everyone uses DaVinci. If we're doing photographs, we shoot into Capture One. If it's personal work, we grade in Capture One. If it's an easy client, we grade in Capture One. Capture One has better grading. If it's a tricky client, or we think it might be tricky, we do the grade using Camera Raw in Photoshop, so then we can adjust it again and still carry on with the layers. There'll be a whole video of this on Studio Access. We also have a whole workflow file naming video on Studio Access at the moment. I'll pop a link below. You can currently sign up and get it for free, so you can go and watch it today and then cancel your subscription if you want. So you can go and have a quick, quick bonanza on there. There's some good info and that sort of stuff. But that's it, three bits of software. That covers everything we do. We're either tethering, we come into Capture One, we archive in Capture One, we do the heavy lifting in Photoshop, and then video's done in DaVinci. Nice and simple, three bits of software. They're not particularly cheap, they're not horrifically expensive, but that's my software of choice. That's what we're working with. Now the drives in this one over here, these are Seagate, Wolf, Iron, Suck, what they're called, something like that, Barracuda, some animal name. They are actually NAS archive drives, they're pretty slow. If we're editing video on these drives, which we often do because we shoot so much, we have to make proxy files. So this has got a two terabyte internal on my uh, main computer, but we can't really work on it. Most jobs are bigger than two terabytes per job. We've currently got three jobs on the go. Plus we've got Studio Access on the go, plus we've got YouTube on the go, then we've got the new lighting workshop on the go. We currently have a 16 terabyte working folder. There's no way we can do that on internal stuff. We could get bigger proxy files. Proxy files are just a one. Even editing photos off these spinning disks is fine, it doesn't matter. Proxy files from there are good. Sometimes like this video here is a YouTube one, this will be a one and done. We'll edit it on the internal one because it's just a small file. But the bigger ones, and if you do any B-roll, that all goes onto the spinning disks, and it's all, data's an issue, um, it's ju it just is. And Backblaze is running 24 seven. We're currently about 10 terabytes behind on cloud storage, so that's an issue. But every shoot, the finals, the working files, the PSBs, they all go into Dropbox as well, so we have those instantly backed up. Now in terms of AI, AI is something I'm constantly, constantly looking at, waiting for it to work. We currently don't have anything AI that works apart from ChatGPT that we use to make my writing better. So for those who don't know, pretty dyslexic, really struggle with writing. If I'm gonna do a big post on Facebook or a newsletter, I write what I want it to say, then I get ChatGPT to make it make sense because otherwise you won't have a clue what I'm talking about. I'm fine talking, just not so good with the words. So ChatGPT is the only bit we really use for AI. Sometimes we might do some generating ideas of images in AI, but really it's never been useful so far. It's just, it's not there. There aren't any AI tools that work. And the ones, if I say that, the ones that do work have always existed and they've just put AI in front of it, like noise cancellation. So I've currently got two air cleaners and a laser and a 3D printer going on in this room. You can't hear it because of AI noise isolated. That's always existed, they just put AI in front of it. Who knows why? But there we go, that's the main setup. Now I'm gonna get into your really good questions because these questions were good. They're genuinely good questions and I think it's important to answer them. Key small things that make your life easier on this setup. So one is, I've got this little plinth here. This is a wireless phone charger, that's useful. But also, 
I have a phone charger coming off the back of this monitor just from a USB port, also useful. So I've got two phones, we often have one charging in each place. That's pretty darn useful. The Scarlett Focusrite is really useful for speaker volumes and stuff like that. These speakers aren't in the best location anymore. They were in a better location before, but I've prioritized monitor setup over audio because my visuals are more important than my audio. So yeah, that, that's that. I think that's probably the only really useful thing. Um, oh, I'll tell you what, there is one really good thing. Let me show you this. It's on my other desk, which we'll do another video on. This is a waiter spike. These are my expenses. I spike them so they stay in chronological order for when I have to scan them in. We also keep a load of the really good USB-C data cables here because USB-C cables are not created equally. These are the super fast ones, they're good. So this question here is I want to know how to properly name and store files. We have an entire video on Studio Access for that, like I've said. There's a method to the madness, but a lot of it, once you're professional, doesn't come down to what you want, it comes down to what your client wants. So it's finding a system that no matter what your client throws at you, still works for you. And we've got that covered on Studio Access. So we use stools for better posture on YouTube videos, but in the studio, we have chairs. These are flexi spot chairs. These were given to me. Um, I've never bought an expensive chair. These are okay. They have the downsides, have their quirks and quibbles. quibbles but they work fine. They're good enough, they're cheap, well, they're free for me. Oh, actually, I got paid to use them, but we're just stuck with them. They're fine, could get a better one, but it's not gonna make me any more money. Lots of questions here on workflow um, and delivery. Delivery requirements, let me just quickly let you know this. Delivery requirements are non-standard. We are currently delivering PSB, TIFF, and PNG to a client. Another client wants TIFF only, and then another client wants PSB full edit layers delivering. So it's always different. We just we do whatever they want. Um, in terms of color calibration, like I say, we've got the data color color checker once a week, bang it on. But it only works if your room is dark. You can't be in a, a room with like window light coming on or anything else. This room, let me show you how dark this room is. Let me turn my video light off. That's what we're dealing with. It's a darn dark room, but it gets the job done. Um, we don't use anything that isn't Photoshop as standalone video editing. They're all rubbish, or not rubbish, they're not as good as Photoshop, and they're also not industry standard. DaVinci Resolve, Capture One, Photoshop, they're the softwares you need to focus your time on learning because they are industry standard. And guess what else has become industry standard that I'm, I still struggle with using? Canva. You can absolutely use Canva today, which is great because it's really easy. Batch editing and how much time it takes per image. We don't ever batch edit, apart from we may apply a standard grade to everything. Doing a grade takes, what, two minutes maybe? Maybe five, if it's difficult and we've messed up the exposure a bit. Doing the grade for this video here will take me under a minute. In terms of Photoshop, it can be anywhere from say an hour to three days, I think we've spent on one image before. It depends, it really depends, but yeah, pretty quick normally. Um, this one here is saying, my wife has the M1 Max, and I'm wondering if we should upgrade her to something more current. Well, I've only just upgraded to the M1 uh, Ultra, which is not that dissimilar. Using Lightroom primarily. Uh, the only place where we've seen lags is using AI noise reduction. Don't use AI noise reduction. Don't use noise reduction, it looks awful. Um, but there we go. I wouldn't upgrade for that. That's money you're never going to see back. There's no way you're so busy that having a faster computer is going to save you time. This here, Saves us time occasionally having this Mac Mini. If I do a YouTube export and I go, oh, that doesn't quite look right, I can export it again in five minutes, whereas before it took 25. It's not really saving me money. I could just post it later. It's not the end of the world. You've got to really ask yourself, am I going to save money? Whilst editing, custard croissant. Are custard croissants better than the plain ones whilst editing? Or does it depend on the coffee? Good question. Um, absolutely no eating at my desk. Never. Never, I don't want crumbs on my desk. That's not for me. Um, but given the choice, almond croissant is superior. How do you find a good retoucher? There are these things called retouching houses. They all live there. Um, yeah, basically you, you go there or you train someone up to do it how you want it. And that's what I've done. So Rob knows all the stuff and now he knows how I like it to look. So it's like a win-win, I suppose. How important and when do you start needing a real, real like ISO calibrated monitor? And then we're asking, you're ending up with 3,000 raw photos. Do you keep these for months and how many drives and all the rest of it? So two questions there. Monitors, ISOs. 
ISOs are better than BenQ. If I go and drop six grand on an ISO today, I will be six grand out of pocket. Now, when this monitor does give up the ghost in terms of like colors no longer calibrate right, we start getting the weird different colors across the screen. Yeah, we'll buy an ISO because we're financially in a place to do that now. I would not upgrade this to an ISO. This is like a, a thousand pound monitor. Buying an ISO will not get me any better results. My colors are already correct. We shoot color calibration charts. We edit on a calibrated monitor. I know this monitor well, which might sound weird, but when I see it on here, I know how it prints. Um, and that's important too. And you've got to learn the new ISO thing because it all looks slightly different. And then you've got to recalibrate your head to know what that is. ISOs are brilliant. They are the best monitors you can buy for reasonable money, but BenQs are cheaper. And when you've got, I mean, in this room alone, I've got five monitors. So it's a lot of money. But yeah, when this dies, it'll be an ISO we replace it with. I just, where's the return on investment? Where is it? I don't know. So that that's why. Now, in terms of shooting loads and keeping files, we keep everything. I don't delete photo shoots from clients. Um, when we're doing personal work, we're going to keep the finals. When we're doing YouTube videos like this, once they upload it, delete it. B-roll, we keep the B-roll so we can use it for other stuff to make it sexy and all the rest and that good sort of thing. But yeah, that's why. That's what, that's what we're doing there. Okay, final question. Why do you have different white balances on your two monitors? I think I've already covered this, but this is a 4K video monitor. This is a 1080p photo monitor. And also, yeah, not 4K. My eyes can't see 4K. I don't know what your eyes are up to. Um, 1080p is plenty resolution for my eyeballs to work on. So I, I'm not convinced you need a 4K monitor for anything. I can't see it being of any use. Um, obviously, nowadays, all monitors are 4K. So if you buy a new monitor, don't go, oh, I don't want 4K because it's... 1080p is ample. Like these both look as high resolution as each other. Maybe I've got bad eyes. Who knows? But that's my desk setup. That's where we live. This is where I spend the majority of my time. I'm just here all the time, really. This is the spot. This is the place. This is where the magic happens, as they say. So better go and film some sexy B-rolls put over this. And um, for those who want the more information, Studio Access is below.